You're uh, working at Tap Out Training Center, so a little change of venue. Why the change? I've been coming here a while. Um, just, um, I was doing my sparring at Couture's, but uh, I mean, the guy teaching run the class was Tompkins, who's Coleman's coach. So I decided to bring some guys over here, just easier that way, until at least the fight's over. Yeah. So how does it feel having to kind of change things up? Are you in a comfort zone, or does it feel a lot different? No, no, it's not. It's good. I mean, really, all I need is my good wrestler, Nick, uh, Alex, stand-up guy, pad holder, and yeah, I'll take turns on me, and we got a big cage here, just like the real one. So uh, it's good work. Yeah, I'm happy. And who, who's Nick? Uh, Nick Fichetti's, uh helped me with my wrestling for this fight. He's a good wrestler. So Nick's a guy who was like a U.S. national team candidate, and he was over at Couture for a while, too, yeah, and he's trying yeah. to make the transition. So that's a pretty high-level guy, and he's a big dude, probably around, what, 220, 225? Yeah yeah, 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 great wrestler, good guy, nice guy, uh, good teacher, too. So actually, like, you know, even before this last couple of fights, I've been, you know, uh, working with him. So uh, this fight picked it up a little more. So was it an advantage, even though you lost the fight, to kind of come into this having fought another wrestler, or is John Jones just so much different than Mark, it doesn't really apply? Yeah, he's a different kind of wrestler. He's so good with his, uh, uh, you know, Greco throws. Where uh, I know Coleman has good lateral drop and all, but his biggest strength is probably his double and single. Right. Coleman, I think, coming out of uh, the Hua fight, I think he got a little dissed, uh, a little lack of respect. And now I'm kind of hearing it built up a little more because I think a lot of well, I think a lot of people looked at that and they were like, well, something's going on here. He's either not conditioned or he's old. Um, but then I had other people who were wrestlers who were like, you know what, a lot of that went both ways where maybe Mark expended too much energy early, but he really wore out Hua with what he yeah. did. I mean, Hua looked just as tired to me. He gave him a good run. And, you know, Hua, like, won the Pride Tournament. He was a champion there. He's, uh, he's been on the top five uh, light heavyweight list for a long time. So, yeah, no shame in getting tired against a competitor like that. Yeah. Can you think of the last time you went in? Uh, let's put Jones aside where it was, you know, wrestler primarily where you had to worry about you know, making sure you stay off the mat and kind of keep it on the feet in terms of career fights? Uh, yeah, I mean, remember I fought Terry Martin, and uh, it was like that. I got takedowns. So I had to keep getting back up and getting off. Uh, so, yeah, I've been there before. Mostly boxing for this one. I know you're working on the wrestling, but is that kind of the game plan going in, to keep it on the feet, kind of move a lot, make him move? Yeah, of course, you know. Uh, you know, he's my... Uh, my length, my distancing, keep it at the end of the punches, fend takedowns. Yeah. So how do you feel about UFC 100? Does it make any difference to you at all? Does it matter to most fighters that, you know, it's a big event and it's UFC 100? I mean, my main focus is Mark Coleman, you know. If I wasn't fighting UFC 100, I'd probably be, oh, yeah, I couldn't go to the expo. And, you know, all these fun activities are lined up for UFC 100. But, you know, I'm fighting. It's all about business. Yeah. Actually, you might be working for free. Otherwise, I was gonna, you know, at least you're getting a paycheck here. They might have you doing a lot this weekend yeah. as one of the guys who likes to go out and, uh, or I don't know if you like to, but they use you a lot as a, yeah. as a rep. Um, so, what does it mean, you know, if you were a fan? What, what does 100 mean? Because I, I tell you, you have a unique position with the company. It's our 100th event. Uh, they've come such a long way, and yet people always point to the Bonner Griffin fight as like this bellwether mark where it officially took off. So, does that mean anything to you, or is it just kind of stuff that people talk about? Well, it means a lot, you know, just to, like, uh, you know, be a part of a pivotal moment like that, that, you know, that feels a little good. But, uh, you know, right, I mean, just on the plate is Mark Coleman. That's the only thing I think about, um, like, beating him. But, um, yeah, for that fan, the UFC 100, yeah, you can't beat it. I mean, a couple of title fights, uh, coaches of the Ultimate Fighter fighting, and, um, you know, a lot of big names, plus the big expo, and, you know, just a lot of stuff. They're really, like, catering this to the fans and trying to give the fans a big treat. So it's, yeah, for the fans, you can't beat this show. All right, now we've seen you in the past in between fights or getting ready for a fight talk about training and dealing with home life. So is everything okay? I know you, you, you talked before about... The, the sex life and all that kind of stuff. So you want to you want to give out the the, de the uh, details again this time, or are you going to kind of keep it to yourself? Oh boy! Yeah. yeah, you know, and I know you guys get sexually frustrated before the fight, so and that's an angle that the fans you know they want to know about this. Yeah, I, I uh, got in a little trouble for that. Um, yeah, she doesn't like me talking about her sex life in interviews, <laughs> but it's good. It's really good. But yeah, before the fight, you know, you got to save up your strength and cut it out. So. 
Yeah, I'm chilling on that part. Like you, like you can go into the bathroom alone, and she's not, you know, she's not banging on the door. Like, what are you doing in there? No, no, Let's go. No, no. It, was, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it, it was a misunderstanding. Okay. No, it was when I was a little kid. I know, I know what I'm saying. At home, it was, like, it was my brother's. Brother. Yeah, like, I couldn't. I can do get you know do anything like uh, he'd always try to bust me spanking it and yeah, yeah. tell my mom and all right. that yeah right but now but that you have no I got now I'm sure you know the significant others like you're you know no 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 get away with this let's go no she uh is definitely um yeah she's supportive of uh, <laughs> my masturbatory activities <laughs> That's a good way to put it. All right, good luck in the fight. Thanks. Thanks. The Tap Out Training Center is not a gym for the pros. It's a way to get folks like you and me back into shape or an even better shape. The grand opening is this Friday and Saturday, both days between 10 and 3. Come meet several MMA stars like Stefan Bonner and Michael Bisbing. Plus, the Tap Out guys, Punk Ass and Skyscrape are hanging out this Friday and Saturday only at the Tap Out Training Center. Check it out online, tapoutlasvegas.com. That's tapoutlasvegas.com. Or visit the Tap Out Training Center at 4040 West Hacienda. That's Hacienda just west of Valley View. The Tap Out Training Center. Let's go!